Hey everyone, Roblox Dev here to teach you Lua. I myself learn from tutorials, so I know what I'm doing. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to script on Roblox from not knowing anything to becoming a Roblox scripter. Um, let's start off with the workspace. This is the workspace right here on your Explorer tab. If you can't see any windows, head over to View and make sure you enable Explorer and Properties. Make sure you also have your output. This is helpful in scripting. So to get started, let me tell you anything inside the workspace is things you can see. For example, the base plate. As you can see, there's a blue outline telling me that I've selected it. Um, for example, if I insert a part by clicking this button up here, it goes right into the workspace and I can see it. Um, I can drag it around to move it around. Um, so the next thing will be how to place more parts. So this is a sphere here. Uh, this is a wedge. And this is a cylinder. These are all the parts you can insert into Roblox Studio. There are no circles. For, the, for that, you're gonna need plugins, which I will show you how to get in a later video. So the first thing we're going to be exploring is how to how to resize your part. So if we just delete these other ones by pressing backspace on our keyboard, just like that, we can head over here and we can begin experimenting. So to resize your part, head over to home and click scale. Now you can use each of these colored dots to resize the part. As you can see, I can make it bigger. I can turn it into a cube. And you can hit Control Z to undo anything you've done. So as you can see, you can make it make the part bigger, smaller, or anything you want. To move it around, you can hit the move tool and use these arrows to move the part up, down, left, and right. Pretty simple, right? The next thing you can do is rotate your part. As you can see, you just click rotate and you can rotate it in any direction. So there you go. And as, and as I said, you can hit Control Z at any time to undo your changes. Um, the next thing we're gonna be looking at is naming your part. I'll oh, just excuse the background noise. So to name your part, you wanna click it and hit the F2 key on your keyboard. If this doesn't work, just right click it and hit rename. From here, you can name your part anything you want. For example, I will call mine brick. The next thing we're going to go over in the properties tab. So everything has properties. The workspace, as you can see, it has properties. The camera has properties and everything has its own unique properties. For example, under terrain, I can see water reflectance. But under workspace, I don't see water reflectance. This is uh, the part which I've renamed brick and it's right in front of us. You can tell because it's highlighted. Also, if you want to get rid of these, just hit select at any time. So let's start going through these properties. This right here is the brick color. You can click it and select a color from this list. This can also be changed with scripts. So let's make our part nice and red. Um, you can also enable and disable um, a part casting a shadow, so we'll disable that. Um, here you can set a more advanced color, as you can see you have your more to choose from, and you have basically any color you can imagine right here. So we can set it to this nice light purple color, or violet. Uh, the next property is plastic. For this property I'm actually going to change back to the normal color. And force field, don't worry about it. Cobblestone, so you've likely seen all these properties, or all these in uh, different games. So ice, uh, you have concrete, and essentially it's just all these different uh, different types of textures you can add to the part. So I think we're going to go stick with the normal, uh, just smooth plastic. The next property is reflectance. This, change how, this changes how, how reflectant the part is, so I can make it more shiny to the point where it's just a mirror, but it just increases how shiny the part is. So if you wanted to make a car or something and you want it to be nice and shiny, you could do that with reflectance. Transparency, you can see through parts. So 0.1, as you can see, I can see a bit through this part. 
To demonstrate, I will get a cylinder, place it here, and make it red. As you can see, I can see the cylinder through this part, because we've adjusted the transparency property. If I make it 0, it's completely opaque, you cannot see through it. If I make it 1, it's uh, completely transparent. It's there, but it's just transparent. 0 0.5, the midway point, you can see it, and you can't see it. Well, you can see it. Um, 0 point, or 0 0.1 is just the slightest bit transparent. We'll stick with 0 for now. Uh, don't worry about these. Here's where you can adjust the name instead of going here. So that's kind of cool. The orientation, um, as you can see, it's how much you rotate the part. Um, next, let's go over uh, parents, children, and siblings. So if I insert a part real quick, as you can see, the part's here. And um, it's a sibling of this part. Allow me to explain. Workspace is the parent, right? So think of it like a family. Workspace, it will highlight everything you placed in your game. As you can see, it goes to the center point. We'll switch back to select for now. So workspace is the uh, parent of camera. Camera is the child of workspace. Brick is the child of workspace. Workspace is the parent of this brick. Um, this part here, which we can name uh, banana, this would be a sibling of brick. As you can see, they're on the same level. If I insert a, uh, let's say, light, don't worry about uh, what it is. It's just a child of brick. For example, if I insert a part into brick by searching for part, as you can see, it's a child of brick. Brick is the parent of this part. I'm sure you get it by now. Banana is a sibling of the base plate, as you can see, they're on the same level, and they have the same parent. That's when you, that's which. Um, that's a better way to explain it. If they have the same parent, they are siblings. So we can delete our banana for now and delete this other part for now. Um, simply biting the backspace key on the keyboard after selecting it. Next, let's go through uh, these behavior properties. So um, to explain anchored, I'm going to switch to my move tool and move the part up. As you can see, the part is now suspended in the air. So if I were to play the game, I get loaded into the game. And the part is already, oh, there you go. The part fell out of the sky. And I'll tell you guys why. The part was not anchored. And uh, the thing, oh, my bad. Uh, the part wasn't anchored. So uh, if I do anchor the part, that essentially means that the part is not going to move. It's stuck in position forever. Unless you change the position mid-game via a script. As you can see, the part is now stuck mid-air. That's because it was anchored. Um, archivable, I really don't know what it is either. Don't worry about it. So let's look over can collide right now. So if we just make the part, let's say super big so I can see it easier. And we move it up. You guys are going to see something here. So I'm going to load in. And the, as you can see, I don't know if you saw it, but... The part, it just uh, fell through. It just fell through because can collide was off. Another example of uh, can collide here. Um, I don't know how to uh, properly do this. Well, I do actually. Here, we just make it anchored. So to explain this better, uh, the part, can collide is off, but it's anchored. So it's not going to fall through. It's stuck in position. So I can walk through this part. It does not collide with anything. Keyword collide. So if I were to turn can collide on. Also you can quickly insert a uh, spawn point. And you can put the spawn anywhere you want. Players will spawn there now. We'll just do that to make it a bit faster. That was done through the model tab by the way. So I spawn here and can collide is on. I cannot go through this part. So you guys saw how when it wasn't anchored it fell. And when it wasn't anchored and it had can collide off, it fell through. If can collide is on and it's not anchored, and we make it a, a bit smaller, watch what happens here. Now I should be able to kick this part around. Okay, well it didn't. If it was smaller, I'd be able to like kick it across the map. It would be, it would fling, and it'd be really funny. Um, next we have a uh, can touch. Um, 
this is a uh, we're gonna uh, explore this more in scripting so uh, when a player touches the part something can happen so essentially that's what that does um, you can also adjust the uh, size so if I make this 2 1 and 6 it got bigger on that axis if I make this 6 became a square and if I make this property 6 here it's a cube as you can see so you can adjust the size from the properties menu as well anything I don't go over don't worry about it you can also adjust the shape here so as you can see now it's a cylinder that's pretty funny I did not know that so position can also be adjusted here don't worry about what I just did position can be adjusted so uh, currently it's three so if I make this seven it goes up in the air as you can see if I make this 20 or even 120 it moved uh, over here if I press Control Z to move it back it went back I didn't see it went back to 14 Control Y can redo what you just undid pretty cool right um, the next thing this is the part this is the part you guys have been waiting for we are gonna insert a script but first let's learn about objects everything is an object not these main services don't worry about them anything here is an object as you can see it says search object you can also press that to open the menu up a lot bigger everything here is an object and can be inserted as you can see I can insert um, a selection box if I wanted to so we can insert a script here and it automatically opens it up if it does not what you can do is uh, just double click it open up the script so make sure your script is inserted in the workspace you can also drag objects around to put them in different places so this script um, it currently starts with print hello world don't worry about that it always does that you know just something to put in the script uh, let's uh, let's start with printing as you just got a glimpse of it so uh, put print with two brackets and essentially what this does is anything here gets put into output so if you don't have output open already hit the, hit the view and click output so uh, anything in these two brackets it gets printed into output so for example if I put uh, to uh, what are these called guys to a uh, quotation marks and then I type say banana in here and I hit play as you can see it printed banana don't worry about the road defender it's something uh, useful to have I'll link it in the description so it printed banana uh, so the next thing you can do is um, note in scripts so as you can see if I do dash dash it goes green right so if I, so if I said so for example if I did dash dash print and then uh, over here I type what well, we just type print two, uh, two uh, quotation marks and type in uh, how about monkey Right? Anything inside here gets printed into the output. So dash dash print. It doesn't really do anything, right? I could like I type that dash dash. Um, this this is better. This is a note or my first note or uh, you know you get the point. So you can just note in scripts. It doesn't do anything. It's just there to help you out. So if I ran this, it would completely ignore the notes and print monkey. Just like that. So if I were to get rid of everything here, and I type print with two brackets, and in here I type in a uh, banana or like a uh, yellow, and then I also do dash dash to note, and then I type in print yellow. Um, it's only gonna or if I here for better example, if I type in banana, right? The I spots are wrong, but that's okay. It won't print that because it's a note, right? It's just there to help you yourself. It doesn't do anything to the script. So anyway, that's all we're gonna be exploring this video. Next video, we're gonna be exploring integers and strings and essentially what they are. We already experimented with a string here. And an integer, um, if you've been to math class, you'll know it's, a, it's just a number value. We'll be exploring that more next video. Hopefully you learned something today and hopefully you do follow this series. You're going to be going from a beginner, noob, all the way up to a pro.